Hi, welcome. Um, we're now on our part two videos about the body. If you haven't watched the first video, then I really recommend you going back and watching that one. So we just to recap, we are looking at our wonderful body and how we have been created and uh, the whys and the what's behind why we've been made is going to give us a really great foundation on learning how to operate from that place. So I showed a, a diagram similar to this. Um, if you haven't got one of these yet, you can make that. There is instructions in our freedom book and in our Bible school, how to make one. Yours probably will be a different color to mine and that's fine, but it's all the same. Um, we're looking at this yellow circle around and we're looking at our body. And we're going to be talking, you'll hear a lot about the pattern of three or the power of three. There's a lot of examples in the Bible, a lot of references to threes. And um, I think God loves numbers. Um, and I think that um, we see that throughout the Bible of how much emphasis he does put on numbers. And so as we can see, there's three parts, there's spirit, soul and body. There's three parts of us. Why, why is three so prominent in the Bible? Because we know we've got Father, Son, and we've got Spirit, okay, as well. And so, again, I talked about in the previous video how we have been created in a pattern after God's very nature, his very um, makeup of who he is. And this is so exciting. And I just love sharing these truths that God has shown me and shown others with you today, because I, I want to get you to just grasp how wonderful your body really is. Um, it has a massive impact on how we view ourselves and therefore what we do with our bodies. And remember, God's number one goal with our bodies is to glorify him um, through our bodies, through the outlet of our bodies. Okay. So as we know, we're three part being uh, primarily spirit, soul and body and scriptures that talk about um, present your spirit, soul and body blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we know that we are a three part being. And so and we know that the Godhead operates in threes, as I said, by father, son and spirit. And there is an overlap. There is a pattern between those and I want to share with you kind of an idea um, of how that is patterned why is there father son and spirit and why is there spirit soul and body and how did they connect lots of scriptures that we'll go into as we go through this but I just want to give you an overview of this is that our body our body represents Christ it represents Christ there are so many verses that we'll look at that talk about how we are one with Christ's body, um, his body and our oneness with his body is a mystery that was revealed to us through the scriptures and our body. And this is just a representation, but, you know, everything that Christ did in order to represent God the invisible God, the father had to come into human form to be expressed to mankind, um, the representation of Christ. And exactly the same way of our bodies, our bodies are created to show people the true nature, the true likeness and the true image of who God is. And then we have our spirit, which represents the spirit of God, okay? Why? Well, when we think about the way that the Bible describes Holy Spirit, he's our teacher, he's gonna lead us into all truth, he's our counselor, he reminds us of all things um, that the Father and the Son have said, and who is the anointing in our life, okay? And again, likewise, with our spirit we have learnt that our spirit is the one that teaches, joined with the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's remember that in our spirit, it's joined with the Holy Spirit, is the one that teaches our soul, that leads it into all truth and our body and reminds us of no, believe in God and hope and believe in God. And that is one thing that we know that the Bible talks about. 
which is really exciting. Okay, and then when we look at our soul, this is where it gets interesting. But I believe it represents the father. Why? And I'm going to talk about a soul that is completely, uh, obviously, transformed and conformed, okay, to the Lord. In the sense that he, he represents, God represents the heart. The father represents the heart, his compassion his thoughts, his choices, his will, his expression um, to the rest of the, the, the body and the body and, and, and the whole being of, of us. And we take on his likeness and that's what we wanna do in our soul. And to be like someone is to be fashioned after their likeness in that when we're making choices that they are, they are choices that are representing who we are in who we are one with God in our spirit when we're looking at we um our emotions God has emotions <laughs> yeah very strong emotions and and remember this that in the bible it talks about that the son does not do anything that he does not see the father doing and the father and the son and the spirit will always speak what the father and the son are saying when we look at this, sometimes it can be difficult because we're looking at it through the lens of, well, my soul is not where it should be and my body's not where it should be. But remember the end goal is that our spirit, soul and body is to be in complete unity, in one unison. This is how God wants us to be. This is why he calls us to present our bodies, our spirit, soul and body holy and blameless and present it to him and we need the work of God to help us to do that let's 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 not underestimate that that is going to come from the Lord strengthening us in his word and us meditating on these truths but let's imagine for a minute that your spirit soul and body are in complete union they are in completely blameless they are completely whole in the way that they work together this is how the Godhead work. There, it's an intertwining of all parts of them and they all speak, act, live, do the same thing. Jesus in his body when he was on earth did not do anything that he did not see the father doing. Can you imagine that with your body? Can you imagine that you can say that your body would not do anything except what it sees your soul that is in complete union with the spirit doing? That your body does not, you don't um, make choices with your body that is not lined up with the spirit of God. What a glorious day. Um, or that my emotions only flow from the beauty of the fruit of the spirit. That is possible, my friends, to the degree that we have renewed our mind, to the degree that we have meditated on these truths. But getting back to the body, when we're looking at what we are, we can see that we have been molded after the expressed image of the Godhead back to the body again and being part with Christ it reminds me of when uh, Saul was persecuting the church and when um, Jesus um, presented himself to Paul on the road I love this and Jesus said to him why are you persecuting me well Paul Saul was obviously not persecuting Jesus in a natural sense but Christ was so in union, sees himself as so one with us, that if he, Saul, was persecuting believers, he was persecuting Christ. This is just how the Godhead sees us. They see us as so, see you, is in such union with them. That's how they live. That's how they see you as one, so I'm getting a lot of sun today, they see you as one with them. And our goal is to get our minds and get our hearts and get our soul and get our, all our being lined up with that reality. To live from the spirit is to live from the perspective of how Christ sees us. Okay, 
So I want to talk a little bit now about the beauty in our body again. And this is all to just infuse you with wonderful ways you can see how God has made us. Okay. So there is a beauty and balance in our body. We have to honor God with our body. This becomes a much more natural process when we discover the wonders of how God sees and loves your body. Beauty and balance starts to become just a natural progression when we start to meditate and think on these truths that we're sharing. Um, we, when we think on the design, the effort, the work that uniquely went into making you, making myself by the hands of God, and we believe it in our hearts, and we renew our minds to this, um, we can do nothing but change and make the decisions and actually follow through with how we see, feel, speak, and what we do with our bodies. When we are so caught up with this revelation, it can impact how we live with our bodies. So many people, for instance, struggle with sexual immorality. You know, they struggle with keeping their bodies pure for for God and for his purposes. But when someone gets their mind changed about the worth of their body, and that when we read in the verses in the previous video about how the Holy Spirit has made his home, God has made his home in our body. And when you take that time to meditate on that and you renew your mind on that, it starts to flow from this place of what I like to call love-based obedience. So many of us, or somebody that say is struggling with sexual immorality, is trying to, if they're a believer, they, they definitely know that this isn't a right thing to do because the spirit will bear witness that this is not the right thing. And so they will try um, often, sadly, in our own strength to overcome those issues. And that because we want to be obedient. But I love this phrase, a lover will always outwork a worker. So you can be a worker of obedience or you can be a lover of in obedience. And so when we connect with God on that level and we start to understand this, our viewpoint starts to change how we treat our body and what it's used for. OK, what it's used for. This love-based obedience flows from this awareness in our spirit through to our soul and starts to change how we use our bodies. So another truth that I really like um, is if you have uh, Romans 1.20, it says, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse. I'll read that again. For since the creation of the world, his, that's talking about God's invisible attributes, his eternal power and his divine nature have been clearly seen. How have we seen it if it's invisible? Okay. But it's through creation being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse. So an unbeliever, really, if they look at everything in nature, the trees, to gravity, to how the planets just revolve around each other, uh, the sun, the moon, um, animals, and we look at creation, there is no excuse to see that there must be someone controlling how the earth works it's just too much order to question god and yes god is the father is invisible but he has made it 
so that his attributes, his eternal power, and his divine nature is shown in all of creation, all that was made. But guess what? You are a part of that creation as well. You were made by God as well. Not just the animals and plants and trees, of course not. We were made. God made Adam and Eve in the garden. We are made and created by God's hands from in the womb. In fact, he knew us before we were in our mother's womb. So even in your body and even in you, can God see the attributes? Can the world see, sorry, the attributes of God? See his eternal power through how he's made you and his divine nature in how he's made you. This is amazing. Um, there's no excuse to doubt God's hand in us. There's no excuse to question how wonderful your body actually is. We actually must stop. And I want to say that very, very boldly. We have to work at stop, stopping speaking negatively about our body when it doesn't line up with all of these wonderful truths that so far, and this is just so far, that we have discovered about our body. My question to you and an exercise for you is, can you see his attributes, God's very attributes in how he has made you? Can you see his eternal power in and through how he's made you? How about his divine nature? Can you see his divine nature in how he's made you? And we've all been made uniquely different. One of the ways I've practiced this is um, how I bring glory to God in what I eat. How I eat, should I say, how I eat. I consider these same questions of how do I see God's eternal power? How do I see his divine nature? How do I see his attributes in the foods that I eat? How do I do that? In the ingredients that I eat or the meals that I consume. I, it requires when I'm eating, and this is something that um, for those who are getting geared up to do spiritful eating with me next year, is a process of this. It requires a slowing down at meal times and snack times, or even as I'm, I'm drinking, okay? Getting rid of all of the noise and distractions and taking time to ponder and really meditate on when I'm eating an apple, for example. I love doing this with the Lord and I've been documenting this about different foods is, God, um, when you made the apple, what part of your nature was expressed through that? Because remember, in, as we read in Romans 120, everything that was created and in creation that was made by him shows his nature. So, I, you know, or you think about a lemon. God, what were you thinking when you made the sourness? of a lemon, um, God, what, what attributes does that display? Even when you think about the power and the benefits that come from the simple, humble lemon or a simple orange, when you think about all the health benefits that it has for your body, that is amazing. In fact, and we'll get onto this later, when you think about it, everything that God made in creation um, the fruits, the vegetables for our food and everything. He made all of that first so that we could survive in this body in that. Amazing. We'll look at that later. So the same way with your body is to take the time to slow down, clear the chatter for a moment, sit down, stand up, kneel, whatever you want to do, and take that time to consider how can I see your glory in my body? How can I see what nature am I seeing of you in my body? When we look at people who are of all different skin tones, what was God's heart in that? 
but what was his heart in that? What was his heart in all of us having different cultures even? But specifically to, our, to your body, start thinking about that. Uh, I, for my healing process, I used to have a lot of problems with body image. Again, I would take, um, I took different parts of our body, our eyes, our nose, our arms, and I, start, and I did um, a little mini project and I looked at all the scriptures about those different parts of my body and what does God say about them? It's actually quite fun. And then I started speaking those truths over my body on a daily basis. Why am I doing this? Because I want my soul first and foremost to connect with how the, what the spirit is saying about my body. And then I knew from that place that by speaking those truths over my body, it brought a life changing experience to me where no matter size or shape in whatever season of life I'm in, I am accepting how I've been made, not just accepting and getting by with it, but what has just all the wonders that God says about my body. And for those who, sh who say, well, I've got this problem. I've got that problem. I'm sick in this way. I've got cancer. I've got a disease so severe. I, I'm, I'm really overweight though, Sophia. I, I can hardly move about without having this immense shortness of breath. Well, I would be thanking God for the things that we do have. I would be setting my mind on Philippians 4, 8, on those things which are praiseworthy, those things which are lovely, those things which are honorable. I'd be also speaking it from the way God had created me and designed me in his image physically and speaking from that place. And if you're living with something that's incurable to man or medical, medical medicine, then again, um, you know, I had an amputation of two fingers that many of you know that. I started to look at God in the meantime, I'm always a believer of healing. I believe that I can receive a creative miracle one day. But in the meantime, what do we do? I started again to see, Lord, how can I use this as an opportunity for your glory? How can I, how can, how can the journey I'm going through, if I can journal it out, if I can map it out, how, when I come out the other end, how, whatever that looks like, how can I use the way you comforted me to comfort another? And that's in the Bible, that we comfort others with the same comfort that yourself was comforted. And so I just wanted to give you some practical examples because I know, I know that when we look at it from a natural, you know, perspective, we can look at things and say, well, there's lots of different things wrong. My hair is funny. This is not right. I've got this sickness. I've got this disease or my brain doesn't work the way I was not as sharp as it used to be, or I want it to be. And I'm not belittling any of those things, but I encourage you that even in that, can you see the beauty? And we want to, instead of talking and seeing and thinking and meditating negatively or as i or as i or i mentioned in an earlier video about or elevating our body into this false realities of where we're actually not worshiping god we're worshiping our body that we actually start to bring our thoughts in line with how god sees your body and not how you naturally with your eyes see your body. Remember this, that your body is an expression of his glory and that God is heavily invested in your body. Christ needs your body. And God has made so much provision in nature, in the spirit, for restoration of all things. And there will be a restoration of all things. But in the meantime, let's work on seeing our body from Christ's lens.
There's no difference when it comes to renewing of the mind, that renewing our mind is that we've got to start changing our views of how we see, hear, feel, and touch of what the world says and line it up with what God says. Okay. So remember that we want to meditate on him being the creator of the body. We are not looking at our body and, and worshipping it and um, lifting it upon a pedestal. We are looking at this from the position of, wow, how wonderful is it that I am the dwelling place of God. And so in our next uh, teaching videos, we're going to look at another pattern of how God has created our bodies and that he talks about that we are the temple of the living God. And we're going to look at the comparisons between the temple in the Old Testament and the Old Covenant. And very basic, I will not go into too much depth in that, but how he um how we've been also patterned after that and what that means for us today and so again just your task for the end of this video is to take a moment to meditate on how those three parts that we talked about how you um express god in his attributes his eternal power and his divine nature through your body and if you've got any questions or you're not sure what i mean by that it's like i don't get it just put it in the comments and then and we can help you to be able to look at it from that perspective. So anyway, thank you so much. And I look out for the next video. Okay, God bless. Bye.